All right, so the final setup of this free crash course will be this fire force field. I originally made this with Embergen and it was the fan favorite by far. This setup summarizes and combines pretty much everything we've learned in this course so far. So it's a great place for us to wrap up. So let's jump right into it. Once again, we're gonna make a new level. So this is where we ended in the previous video. So again, just file, new level, basic, and then file, save level as, let's name it our level underscore 05 underscore force field. And right away, I'll just create that spotlight like I like to do and then delete the directional light, outer cone angle, extend that, increase the intensity. And now we can go into our VFX folder, right click, Niagara system, empty system, let's call it NS underscore force field underscore beam, right? Because it has the beam element and then it has that sort of sphere element when it hits. So these will be two separate simulations. Let's open the force field beam and let's make a new emitter, empty, rename it F2 emitter underscore particles underscore beam. Right away, let's not forget to make it a GPU simulation with fixed bounds. We need to give birth to some particles. So plus sign spawn. It's going to be a spawn rate because we need a continuous beam. And let's give it a lot of particles. So 5000 particles. Let's make them smaller. So initialize particle size mode uniform and maybe a size of just two and the lifetime can be shorter as well. So let's do three. Then we need to give them a velocity. So again, particle spawn group plus sign at velocity and it's going to want that solve forces module. So fix issue and we don't want it to go up. We actually want it to go left. So Z axis zero and X axis. I'll actually do 500 velocity. We need this to be pretty fast and that's still a very long beam. So I think that the particles just need to die way sooner. So I'll just do, let's do 0.3 lifetime or maybe 0.5. Now we need this beam to be wider. You might think that we could use the in cone shape, but the cone will just keep making it wider over time. And we just sort of need it to be a uniform same width beam. So let's actually just use the sphere location. So particle spawn, and I'll just type location and use the shape location, right? So I just need this sphere to be much smaller. So sphere radius, let's do maybe 10. And now we're getting this nice uniform beam of particles. Now I need to see how big this actually is in relation to our scene. So let's drag the Niagara system into our scene. All right, so I just paused the video and imported these two Mixamo characters. Didn't want to make you watch that. But at least now we have an idea of how big things actually are. So let's connect the particles to some smoke. So right click, add emitter. Let's make it a parent emitter, grid 3D gas, master emitter. Now particle update and just type set. And we need the set fluid source attributes. And now we can go to emitter summary, source, Let's turn off the sphere source, particle source type emitter. And this we can just type emitter particles beam. And it's working awesome. So we can just, you know, change the size of our emitter here to accommodate our scene. So it doesn't need to be as tall. So I'm thinking just 200 on the Z axis. Let's move it in the middle of the scene. So set this to, let's say 0.2. Extend it on the X axis, so maybe a thousand here. And let's say 600 on the Y. And we need to move it over on the X axis. So final number 0 0.45 on the X axis, right? We want the emitter to be close to this wall. So it has as much room as possible to simulate to the left. Let's give it more room on the Z axis. So 400 on the Z. Let's make it collide with the floor. So collisions. Open boundary minus Z, uncheck that. I think the particles could die just a touch sooner. So initialize particle lifetime, let's do 0.3. 
we can also just hide the particles at this point so you can turn off the sprite renderer for the particles now we don't want any smoke we just want fire right so emitter summary we can go to simulation and turn off density and just turn on temperature as always it's gonna be way too bright so set fluid attributes we can lower the temperature to just 0 0.05 and the density here to zero so it's not generating any smoke let's try 0 0.03 for the temperature i don't want it to be rising up so temperature buoyancy just set that to maybe 0.1 okay so this is not a bad start at all we can add our collider sphere so shapes sphere for me right now it's colliding right away if it's not colliding for you just select the sphere and just type in tag. I showed you guys how to do this before, but in case you missed it, right? Just search tag and type in collider. And this will let Niagara know that you want this particular object to be a collider for the simulation. And it should be colliding like this. So I want the flames to stay alive for as long as possible to sort of go around the sphere. So we can go to our emitter summary simulation dissipation rate for the temperature and just set that to zero. And that should really make those flames stay around for a long time. Now, as you can see, the collisions are not great. And that's because of the pressure here. So the pressure solve iterations, let's set that to 20 in this case. And let's also increase the resolution of the simulation. So 350 for the resolution here. And now we're starting to get those nice collisions where it's going around the sphere. Let's center everything. Now, just as a quick tip, I want to show you how to make an invisible material. So we can go into our materials folder, right click, new material, just call it M underscore invisible, open that up. And we need to make it a masked material under blend mode. And then you can just hold one and click, connect that to the opacity mask. And this will effectively make an invisible material for you. So just save that go to materials and just drag the invisible material on top of the material here. And your sphere is gone, but it's still colliding with our fire and it's starting to look pretty sick. So you could end here, right? This is a bit more minimalistic, cleaner version. I went for something way more extreme over here, but it's up to you. Maybe the beam is still just a touch too bright. So set fluid attributes and just set it to 0 0.02 and you know we are simulating a bunch of dead space over here because the fire doesn't go as far so you can just go to emitter summary and shorten it on the x-axis so maybe just 700 on the x okay that looks good and let's uncheck draw bounds hit g to hide everything and here you go so this will be the end of part one and in part two, we will do the big flaming sphere around our character here.